Good evening, everybody. Pangapsimnida. As usual, let us begin our Dharma talk with the mantra of the universe in its purity, Om Nam, seven times, please. Om Nam Om Nam Om have a wonderful situation. We are in a wonderful temple with a long tradition and there's living Dharma in this temple. There are many temples which have a long history but some of them have no living Dharma in there and there's living Dharma outside of temples but sometimes they are very hard to find. Think back to the Shila dynasty. Why did they build all these temples? Why did they put centuries of effort For that, to understand, we need to see what the purpose of a temple is. In Shakyamuni Buddha's time, people went into the forest and they meditated. Then, Buddhist temples were built. And now we have a very good situation with thousands and thousands of temples. What are these temples good for? Just to have a nice architecture? Or nice chanting three times a day? Or very good temple food? Or for people to gather and talk and then go to the mountain? or maybe to study and practice. As strange as it may sound, the original job of a temple is for everybody to get enlightenment. And those temples that have living Dharma in them, they serve this purpose. Why are we here this weekend? Most of us want to make our minds clearer than before. And our wonderful tradition, Korean Sonbulgyo, is very suitable for that. Our teaching originates from Yukcho Desa, the sixth patriarch. Even before Dharma Desa or Bodhidharma put his seal on Zen or Sonbulgyo. And of course, we can go back to Nagarjuna or Shakyamuni Buddha himself. But the most important factor in our teaching is what we call Huadu or great question, and that comes from the sixth patriarch. When he was chased by rival monks, Then he stopped and said, when you don't think of good and bad, what is your original face? Then it became shorter. What is your original face? Then even shorter, what is this? And as we practice the Huadu or Kanhuasan today, it is still following the sixth patriarch. So we say, one Huadu, 10,000 Kongans. It's enough to ask one question to return to don't know. This don't know mind is before thinking. It's before any dualistic appearance. It is clear like space, clear like a mirror. But words cannot fully penetrate it. So for centuries, we have been demonstrating that. Do you hear the sound of the crickets outside? That sound is just as good as this one. So your best teacher is the crickets right now. Whatever brings you back to this moment is your teacher. Whether it's an angel or a demon, an animal or a human, doesn't matter. So what is it that brings you back to this moment, to this clarity right here, right now? You cannot take the cricket with you to the aircraft or to the train. During meditation, you do not use a Zen stick. But what you always have in your mind is your question. This question opens up the mind. The great question, what is this, leads you to your true nature. 
And when you attain, then truth appears. So after attaining our substance, we perceive truth. In our clear mirror mind, we see clearly, hear clearly, taste, smell, touch clearly. And if we perceive truth correctly, we can also function correctly. We call that correct function. This correct function can appear with correct action or speech or thinking or emotions. So just like the three legs of a tripod, our practice has these three important components. Substance, truth, and function. So if you keep the great question, you return to the mind which doesn't think, doesn't move, doesn't act, has no I, my, me. That's our substance. Then the truth. I have just spoken about it. What do you hear now? What do you see now? And the function is what are you doing right now? And that's why Huadu is so important because it's one key, but it opens 10,000 gates. Today, many of you have been to interview. This Zen interview or Son Moon Tap in Korean is a very important training tool. With that, you recognize what kind of situation you have in the Kongan, what kind of relationship you have in that situation, and what is your correct function in that situation which the Kongan presents. So the Huadu, the original question, the great question, has no space, no person, no color, no taste, no story. But in the Kongan, there is a story. There are human beings, sometimes even animals, past, present, future. Lots of things appear. So how do you keep this clear mind in a very paradoxical situation? How do you resolve very strong dualities or conflicts? How do you keep your clarity when you become very emotional or very confused? So Kongan training is very good for developing your intuition. Intuition is the direct manifestation of our true nature. You cannot substitute it with your intellect or with your emotions. That's why it's so unfamiliar. But if you solve it and you look back at it, it makes perfect sense. Many of you finished today a basic question. Bell and stick, are they the same or different? And some of you had a really hard time, and I appreciate your effort. You were thinking this way, you were thinking that way. Sometimes you were very smart, but that thinking, not necessary. Not good, not bad, but it doesn't serve the purpose. Only reflect, keep your mind clear like space, clear like a mirror. In the Kongan practice, you can make mistakes. That's no problem. In fact, the teacher is there to help you. A true teacher never judges you. But life is different. Life is sometimes very brutal. You make one mistake and you have to work for years to correct it. In the interview room, you make one mistake, next day you can correct it. And there's a secret for that. Even if you study with me for years, every interview is the first interview. I don't care how many kongans you finished. I don't care how long you have been working on one kongan. Right now, right here, show me your beginner's mind. And this beginner's mind, very important. It doesn't have any self-image. Doesn't have any ideas about the Dharma. Only tries. And that's all that matters. At the beginning, kongans are very easy. Finding the answer is like finding a needle in a haystack. At first, this haystack is very small. You fumble around a little bit, hey, that's it, that's the answer, wonderful. At the beginning, it's fine to have that. But as the kongans get more difficult, the haystack becomes bigger and bigger. After a while, the needle begins to look like a piece of hay, no special color, same color as the haystack. So then you cannot really use your intellect or your emotions to find the answer. Then you bring a big magnet. That big magnet you put above the haystack and then this strong magnet, boom, attracts the needle. Boom. This magnet we call don't know. The way the needle is separated from the haystack is the intuitive process. And that's why I told all of you, don't think about your homework. Sit on your homework. Practice don't know mind and underneath there is your homework and it's getting ripe. And one day, pff, it appears. And that's a wonderful day. 
you present the answer to your teacher, then if it's correct, then another happiness comes. You get another kongan. Then you can sit on that homework too. That's how we develop the habit of relying on your intuition. Some of you asked me, what is this whole thing good for? I mean, it looks good, it feels good, the food tastes good, everybody is wonderful. What is this thing good for? If your mind is clear, you make less mistakes. If your self-image is clear, then you have no illusions and no ego. You make less suffering, also you receive less suffering. Empty space doesn't hit, and it cannot be hit either. Kongan training also teaches you how to solve problems correctly. In life, many times you have a 70% solution. The 30% you didn't solve comes back to you. That's how you know that your solution was not complete. Think about situations that were very difficult. If you really finish that, that situation never appears again, never. But if similar situation appears, you still have some karma with that. Relationships, even more so. You determine that you will never meet this and this person again, never. But next day in the coffee shop, someone very similar appears and you connect and you react. If your mind doesn't change, your deep structure of relationships also doesn't change. So Kongan teaching teaches you how to give correct solutions to difficult situations. Also, due to our wonderful Zen masters of Tang Na Dynasty, Tang Nara, and also Shila Dynasty, and later, we have wonderful high standards for the correct solution. So I want to thank all of you for making this effort. Please understand that this road has no end. So never think, I arrived. The moment you think like that, your little flower that the Buddha held in his hand begins to wither and die. Instead, have this question, how may I help all beings? How may I help you? And if you have this question, soon hindrances will disappear. It is a very deep truth that if you want to attain personal liberation, you cannot do that without helping others. We are more deeply connected as human beings than you think. And as you practice, you realize more and more this deep interrelatedness as human beings. And now if you have any questions I can help you with, please feel free to ask. 깨달음을 가는 길에 남을 도와주지 않고는 가기 어렵다고 하셨는데 저희 같은 사람이 다른 사람을 자비로 도와주려고 하는 마음을 자연스럽게 얻어내기를 힘들더라고요. 그러면 억지로 마음을 자꾸 내야 되는지 아니면 자연스럽게 될 때까지 기다려야 되는지 도와주는 것도 의도를 해야 되는지 Don't wait. What you can help, you can already help. Don't force anything, only practice hard. Somebody is hungry, it's obvious that person needs food. Somebody is thirsty, obvious the person needs a drink. It's not difficult. If you look at that situation and relationship with that human being, in a snap of a finger you can determine this very easily. If you have to think about it, then doubts appear. Small doubt, big doubt, doesn't matter, but it really kills your willpower. Then take a step back. Let the situation appear again. And then you practice. You don't wait for anything. More questions? So, uh, I want to help you. What do you need? I would like you to come to Hungary, Won Kwangsa again, and please make a wonderful tea ceremony out of Won Kwangsa Nokcha and bring your friends. This is how you can help me, Bosan. Thank you very much. Thank you. 하나의 공안에 대한 답을 찾고 그 다음에 또 다른 공안을 받아서 또 찾아야 된다면 최종 단계에는 언제쯤 도달할 수 있습니까? There is no last kongan. Only we change body. That's it. Even death is not the last question. Not the last conflict. It's just another kongan in the line. 그럼 끝없이 해나가는 건가요? No. Your teacher does. Your teacher asks you a kongan, then you practice with it, okay? I think kongan and huadu in your mind are together. They are not the same. Huadu is ige mo shinga, or what is this? We ask that all the time. That's true. 
but we don't keep our congan in the head like masam gun, three pounds of flax, okay, from Dong San Zen Master. We don't keep that in our head. We don't ask that. We don't have to. The congan we don't ask. The huadu we ask. The huadu is the key. The congan is the gate. And the key opens the gate. So huadu suheng has two important phases. One is when you ask with a sentence inside, igemo shinga, or what is this? This lasts one, two, sometimes three years, depending on how much you practice. You go to winter kyolche, summer kyolche, hangot, dongangot, very short time, your question becomes independent of words. So your question will happen inside the mind without saying it. So we say the huadu is there, but the words are gone. You don't have to say it, it's already there. And that's why that goes back to the original mind, which has no words, no speech, no name, no form. Original huadu is rooted there. Someone else does like yombul or mantra practice, it can have the same effect over the years. We say the mantra melts into space and it disappears as words, but the mantra itself remains there. The energy doesn't disappear. I shouldn't explain more about this. When you practice, you will experience it for yourself. But if your karma appears very strongly, then the mantra appears again as Kwan Sambosa, Kwan Sambosa, Kwan Sambosa. Then it stops your mind from going to the wrong direction. Huadu, same. Some strong karma appears, Huadu again appears as a sentence. What is this? So trust your practice. 조금 전에 공안이 문을 열고 들어갈 때 열쇠와 같다고 하셨잖아요. 문을 열고 나서 또 다른 문을 또 열고 또 다른 문을 또 열고 계속 열어야 됩니까? You have to perceive what is behind the door when you open it. The door itself is not important. The new space behind that door, that's important. So how big is that space, that new room? behind that door. If it's very small, you have to open another door and another door. But if by one opening you get infinite space, then one is enough. That's why in our style we do not talk about the difference between sudden practice or gradual practice. It has no meaning. It depends on your karma and on your dharma, whether you feel it as sudden or gradual. I tell you a story. When Sung San Suni went to America, nobody understood Kongans. Nobody. Maybe some people who practiced before with Japanese Zen masters, they had some idea, they had some understanding. But that was not Sung San Suni's style. In fact, that was very different. So Sung San Suni set up very clear Kongan system. Not so difficult, medium, more difficult, very difficult, extremely difficult, like that. If you practice really diligently, it takes about 10 years to finish really the necessary amount of kongans to become a teacher. It's about 10 years or more. There was a retreat in the late 70s on the East Coast, and a woman entered that 10 day retreat. And that woman finished the 10 most important kongans, the 10 gates in 10 days. It was totally incredible. No one has ever done that before. And at the end of the retreat, the woman said, Zen is boring, I'm gonna do something else. And she went to a different tradition, which I think was a very good decision for her. It wasn't a challenge for her. So due to her previous karma, she went through the 10 gates one by one, but no new space appeared. Karma didn't change. She didn't have to make any effort, so go somewhere else. Correct tradition for you, for every one of us, means enough challenge. Not, no challenge, don't do it. So when your mind gate opens, what kind of change is that for you? Big change, small change, or no change? Important question. So, Mm-hmm. 
어디서 참선을 경험을 하고 나서 관화선과 공안에 법문을 듣고 좋아서 접하고 싶은데 일반 어 저희는 상대적으로 좀 스님이나 수행자에 비해서 어 저희가 선지식을 선지식을 모시거나 스승님을 두고 공안을 받을 수 있는 환경이 조금 어려워서 for sunims too also difficult. <웃음> 그래서 저희 같은 사람들은 어 관화선이나 공안을 처음 접할 때 어떻게 해야 될지 First you come to a retreat, you bow to the Buddha, then you sit. You come to the interview room, bow to the teacher, then you talk. Don't make it too special. Just come for retreats with Son Muntap. That's all it takes. Retreat after retreat after retreat. I have two questions. Um, the first, I, I find myself struggling um, with trying to be present and mindful and trying to see from myself and also uh, trying to see from my perspective trying to be uh, very mindful while I'm trying to realize that there is no independent um, being that I am. Is this a worthwhile conflict and an effort? So there's two parts. One is me trying to be mindful and be present in my, in my body, but at the same time trying to realize that there is no independent self, that we are all interwoven. So these two things seem to be very conflicting, and I wonder if this conflict is worthwhile to make efforts to understand. Hot! When you heard that shout, where was your conflict? Your smart mind gets you into trouble. Your thinking is like a fisher's man's net. But you cannot dance in the net because then you become the fish. If you say a human being is totally independent, it's a mistake. We all depend on oxygen, food, water, good relationships, many things. We depend on that. But if you say that we are totally tied and bound, we have no autonomy, no free will, that's also a mistake. How do we reach maximum autonomy in this interdependent situation, on this earth, in this body? That's the question. It's worthwhile to explore that. The paradox of freedom and interdependence. If you don't use your freedom, you never grow up. If you do not recognize our interdependence, how can you take responsibility? So put down the theory. Moment to moment, see your correct situation, correct relationship, correct function. I, saw, I find myself also wondering about the motivation against desire. When you feel you have some selfish desire, immediately get some company and share everything. Share it. Then your desire doesn't become selfish. Let's say you love boicha. It's wonderful tea. But you don't go to Kyongbok Kung Yog, Seoul, and then go 500 meters alone to this wonderful cha chib. You don't do that alone. You give a phone call, maybe two phone calls, and you grab your friends, and then you go together. You share. With selfless motivation, it's the opposite. It's already for all beings. You don't profit anything out of it. So you say, it's my job. Every morning I wake up, I do my practice, it's my responsibility. Then you can keep balance. More questions? 나이가 들어가면서 어, 좀더 가치 있는 삶을 살고 싶다라는 생각을 하기 시작하는데요. 돈이 가치를 추구하지 않는다라는 것도 알겠고 건강이 중요하고 주변의 사람들이 중요하다라는 걸 알면서도 어떻게 살아 사는 것이 나이가 들어가면서 가치 있는 좀더 보람찬 삶인지 항상 고민을 해 봅니다. 여기에 대해서 한 말씀 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. Sung San Sim used to say to young American people, become monk or get married. Just being alone and having your own opinion that's not good. Get into some kind of situation 
And that situation brings you some relationship. So these days, many people are attached to their own individuality. That's not good, not bad, but they are alone. And they have their apartment, their car, their job, their TV, their phone, everything they have, but inside, lonely. Because having a human relationship is sometimes difficult. Because the end of the line is another human, not a telephone, not a car, not a dog, a human being, very complex. We have four kinds of karma, individual, couple or duo, family, and group. Individual is easy to understand, but not easy to master. Only the greatest people could stay individuals, and they remained very true human beings. Usually the individual needs the other three. So when we are young, we have some partner, we have some loving relationship, and we experience the second kind, the dual karma. Yeah, it looks like a loving relationship at first, and it is, and it should be. But as time goes on, it becomes a very strong reflection of one another, reflecting, knowing each other, feeling each other, guessing what's the next move automatically. It's very strong reflection. And that intimacy sometimes can be very disturbing, very uncomfortable. I don't want anybody to know me so well. Maybe someone says that. So I don't want to know anybody else so well. We have to deal with a lot of things when we take someone else as a responsibility and that person takes us as his or her responsibility. But we're humans, we cannot really avoid this. Then from dual relationship, we have a decision to make. Become a family, make children after marriage, or break the dual relationship and enter into the group. Many people these days, they don't want to make this decision. So sometimes they don't even have a long couple relationship, they stay individual. But then it's more difficult to open up the heart because there's no one with the key. So you have to make a decision. Of the four kinds of karma, which one is more important for you? So if you say family, then get married, have children, and then all problems solved. Then new problems come. Okay? So I want to sincerely appreciate everybody's effort during this weekend and beyond. I understand that for most of you, this is either new or you haven't done any practice in this style, although you have been in Buddhism for a long time. I appreciate your openness, and I hope you will find this practice useful, whether in the short run or in the long run. I also want to thank the Miwangsa Juji Sunim Kim Kang Sunim and all the other Dejung Sunim and lay people at Miwangsa to receive us, feed us, and help us. Thank you very much. Kamsa Amnida.